Um, so first question to you, which is, uh, you know, are you planning to apply? Um, when are you planning to apply? Right? So is it 2021? Is it? So I'm just trying to get a sense of where is it that you are right now? Okay, just go ahead and you know, whatever you think at this point. Great. Excellent. Thanks so much. Everyone has been responding on this poll. Um, very good. So just go ahead and uh, mark an answer. I'm going to end the poll now. All right, so let me end it. Uh, so majority of you seem to be looking at applying in 2021, right? That is uh, going to be um, like you're going to be applying this year uh, in 2020 for admission starting 2021, right? Just to make sure that all of us and some of you are wanting to apply with the extended deadlines uh, in 2020 itself, which means your schools uh, will start this year. And uh, some of you are still on the fence. You are figuring out where you want to go. Great. So uh, what are the things that you need to do? I'm, I'm basically going to give you three uh, basic things over here, right? Uh, that I would like you to consider. So the first thing is I want you to consider that 2020-21 is expected to see a huge bump in the number of MBA applications. And uh, the reason I'm, uh, you know, is, is, is very clear because what has happened is, uh, you know, there have been many people who, especially if you were to look at a place like Bangalore, right? A lot of startups have been laying off and uh, these are people who worked in the tech team and the operations team, very smart guys. And uh, right now the job market doesn't look very great. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I'm seeing as a trend. Okay. Uh, and I'm also uh, hearing it from a lot of B schools where, uh, you know, these top schools are saying, you know, we have seen a surge in interest for our programs, right? Um, so what will happen is that uh, you're going to see a lot of people who are going to be, uh, you know, applying to B schools. And, you know, there is also another thing, which is uh, people talking about uh, uh, the fact that the classes will be online. But uh, again, I'm, I'm going to be sharing some uh, interesting insights from what I've heard from students uh, at Crack Verbal, correct? But uh, one of the things that I'm noticing is many of our students who have gotten an admission are actually not de deferring it. So you understand the concept of deferment, which basically means that instead of joining this year, you have an opportunity to join next year, correct? Uh, especially given that this year there is this whole online classes and stuff. Uh, but interestingly, what I'm also seeing is uh, there are not a lot of because a what my students are telling is Arun, if I don't join this year, correct? I don't really know, um, you know, how things will pan out the next one year, correct? Before the COVID situation, I at least had some guarantee. Now there is no guarantee, so instead of me taking this turbulence over the next one year, um, you know, why don't I just go ahead and uh, you know get into a program, right? That's one 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 theme that I'm hearing. Uh, the second theme that I'm hearing is, um, so students who actually are joining September 2020, that is this year, uh, you have to take into context that they are people who applied in September last year, okay? <laughs> Which means they took the GMAT somewhere around June, July last year, correct? They ended up uh, applying in September, they got through, they interviewed, they got their admit in December. Now, many times what happens is once we have made up our mind that we want to do an MBA, correct? Uh, like there is a movie with had this quote which said, if you know, um, you know, uh, what you want to do for the rest of your life, you want that rest of your life to start today, right? I mean, so a lot of students say, Arun, but I have mentally made up my mind to do an MBA, so let me just go ahead and, uh, you know, with that commitment. So that's uh, one of the trends that we are seeing. But yes, it is going to be a huge spike which means competition is going to uh, increase. Uh, some more, uh, you know, uh, updates that I've had is students who actually have taken the GMAT uh, are telling that, hey, you know what, I realize that now that I have a GMAT score, uh, why don't I just go ahead and apply, correct? Um, so if, if nothing else, I get rejected. So even then, if I were to apply in 2021, for example, right? Uh, at least I could consider this to be a dry run, right? Um, so that's one uh, school of thought. 
uh, and uh, as I mentioned earlier that people have got admits are joining okay and one other thing that I'm noticing as a trend and uh, I've seen many of my students uh, kind of look at it so I ask you know students on this so one thing that I'm hearing is that uh, if you look at the whole timeline of uh, how the GMAT works and how the timeline works what I'll do is I'll just share my screen um, just to give you a sense of just give me a second I'll just yeah so uh, just to give you a timeline right now we are at June correct um, so what's gonna happen is uh, this year and uh, let's assume that uh, though the dates are still not out uh, it's going to be so if I were to take 2020 right um, we are at June right so the whole idea is that June July August is uh, and you could say even September right is the time that you have to uh, take the GMAT right take the GMAT and uh, kind of and research on programs I'll be giving you this a little later as well correct October to December is the application time correct this is the time that you will be applying right which means that in 2021 right you're going to be joining a school in uh, September correct so what I'm hearing from students is that look at this point I don't have visibility over here correct but at least I have an option of applying irrespective of how the rest of the year goes because what is not within my control is uh, how the pandemic is going to turn out right but what is within my control is having a plan B right so that's why I'm saying you know like GMAT as an insurance policy because let's assume that in October you realize that you want to apply this year correct uh, it may be too late because you have not taken the GMAT so you know that's that's another thing that I'm hearing that we are taking the GMAT but it may it may mean that we may also not end up applying this year but we just want a GMAT score um, end of the day one thing that I want to uh, tell you is uh, the decision depends on a lot of personal factors uh, for example the first thing that I would like you to reflect on is your own industry correct how has this been disrupted uh, by the whole situation by uh, the recession for example if you're in aviation if you're in hospitality uh, if you're in any of these kind of streams you will realize that uh, life is going to be very different uh, for the, over the next couple of years right so uh, what what are these disruptions do you think an MBA uh, can help you a tide out the recession B uh, also kind of give you uh, some you know it's like being in a secure zone when turbulence is happening in your industry correct so what it does is it gives you a good chance to reflect upon uh, things correct while you are in the safety of a B school so to speak um, you know but really I would say uh, people where your industries are getting impacted uh, probably need to consider um, second thing I think it's also a personal decision uh, based where you are uh, you know in terms of uh, your personal life um, so one thing that I've heard from students and I don't know uh, if you 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 agree with this maybe it's a thought that's agree that's come to your mind let me know if it has uh, so I've heard students tell me that actually because of the COVID, we are sitting at home, working from home, our priority is becoming clear, right? Uh, when we went to the office, we came back, we didn't have, you know, any reflection. Now that I'm reflecting, what I realized is that, uh, you know, when uh, whatever I require, right, in terms of my uh, life goals are not aligned with my current job. So one of the reasons why people want to do an MBA is also because they want to move out and go to a place where uh, they are perhaps more aligned with their strengths correct uh, and remember that MBA at the end of the day is your life good correct MBA is not the end please right MBA is a means to the end so what I think is more important is for you to ask yourself right with or without an MBA okay uh, how do you think your life is going to progress and I'm not asking you to make a very clear idea of what it is but in general where do you think you want to be uh, headed I think that level of clarity will help you answer this question why MBA right um, so that's that's my thoughts on the whole thing uh, what are the advantages um, it basically depends on 
a couple of you know this so first i would say it depends on what is your uh, you know uh, kind of profile right so are you a person who's just graduated is still in college right and uh, perhaps has less than 2 years experience i'm just giving a poll over here or are you someone who has somewhere between 2 to 6 years right or are you someone who is about 6 years right because your personal um, you know background is obviously going to impact what you get out of an mba program so what a fresher would look at would be very different than what someone with 8 to 10 years of experience would look uh, from a program like this right uh, so uh, just go ahead and let me know what profile that you think you are in i'm going to be ending the poll now all right so uh, i see it seems to be like a, a tie between you know not a tie but like overall young working professionals 2 to 6 and a uh, 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 lot of people with uh, more than 6 years experience uh, while there are also some students who graduate great now why i'm asking you to do this is because whatever i'm going to tell right uh, so this is the poll that we did but whatever i'm going to tell is based on this so now for people who have less than 2 years experience i'm going to pick uh the example of one of our students right uh she has an engineering degree correct she is just graduated uh she is not really started looking out for a job uh many of the campus jobs that came she was not very interested most of them were routine it jobs finance jobs uh she is not very sure what she wants to do um you know uh she is not taken the gmat expects about 700 plus got a lot of you know this now uh, for a person like this right you have to understand what the advantages are are very different right so the first advantage is the job market has been badly hit right so uh, for example she wanted to get into a digital marketing firm but uh, you know overall marketing budgets have gone down digital marketing agencies are shutting shop um, you know so it's it's a pretty brutal market for her to enter uh, the second is you know when you are a student correct you kind of want to continue on that journey uh, sometimes you feel you may uh, you know you you still are too young to get into the job market or you're too inexperienced sometimes uh, people are very clear they think you know graduation is just a stepping stone for something bigger right and uh, sometimes what happens is if you graduate and someone else is working and uh, you end up investing 2 years in an mba or a masters program then when you go back to the job market um your standing will be uh, in you know in the eyes of the corporate world will be slightly higher uh, over a period of time than uh, your peers who have two extra years of experience right so uh, these are the advantages if you are looking at uh, starting your career if you are somewhere in the middle you know uh, you have some that between 2 to 6 years experience i'm just picking uh, one of my uh, students um so he has about 3 years experience um he is great uh technically right um and uh, you know he loves gadgets he is like a tech geek right i mean that's what he is he took the gmat he got a 560 but he is planning to retake it uh, he is hoping to score 720 right now his uh you know kind of uh, expectation is very different so i'll tell you what he told uh, so he told me arun uh, one of the reasons you know like when i was on campus right uh i was judged based on my marks and he said i am always a smart guy but i i i did not manage to get uh, good grades and because of that you know many of his peers right they actually ended up uh, getting better paying jobs in uh, you know bigger companies so he uh, settled for what he thought uh, was something that you know he could have done better so now with about 2 to 3 years experience uh, his whole plan was now that i have solid experience and i have grown much more in my career than my peers i want to now get back to uh, you know uh, switching jobs now what happens when just when he's decided to switch jobs what happened the recession happened and he saying around all my job interviews have dried up correct um, so i think this is one uh you know way to kind of wade through this recession period because there's going to be bumpy there's going to be a lot of ups and downs right uh so in some sense uh two years if you want to invest ever in your career right this might be the right time 
okay um, and and you're really upskilling yourself with your experience see as a fresher what you could have gained from an mba program is very different than what you gain after you get experience and trust me on this um, you know that experience that you have gained will help you uh, you know get more out of the mba program okay um, and uh, you know you are basically kind of you making the best use of your time right uh, if the job market without covid had been chances are you would have jumped jobs you would have got a 50% increment and uh, you know things would have been different correct but now we'll have to see uh, what we can do um i'm going to give an example of a third uh, student he's already uh, you know as a product manager in a role he's not a full fledged product manager but he's taking care of a particular feature so he is also the developer but he's also uh, responsible for uh, the, the, the the you know the life cycle of that feature so to speak right um his his dream is arun he says i have always wanted to be an entrepreneur uh, but what happens is with his job he he has got the technical chops um but he doesn't have the management perspective to look at a problem right um, he wants to be an entrepreneur he wants to have his own startup uh, and uh, doing an mba for him makes sense because uh, he gets the basics right you know he understands uh what are the basic functions of any company if you think about it there are only five basic things that any company would do right um the first thing is you have value creation correct what value are you creating what is your product or service that you feel uh, will have an advantage uh, to the world what is marketing that's your second how are you able to create a brand right third how are you able to sell correct how are you able to uh, deliver value right that is where once a person has purchased the product or service how does he experience you right and the last part is finance do i have the numbers am i profitable what are the metrics i need to look at now what an mba does is it gives you an overview of all of this correct so when you want to start up something on your own or you want to get into a senior management role right um you essentially have uh you know an advantage because you have a bird's eye view of things right um one other thing that i have noticed and someone asked on the chat window of someone uh with let's say more than 10 years experience so i'll give you uh, another ex uh, you know example of uh, a student who actually had about 12 to 13 years experience i'll give you his name um his name is neeraj kakkar so neeraj kakkar was my student um way back in 2007 when we had just started uh, off he ended up scoring a 770 on the gmat he went to do his mba at wharton uh, and he graduated and uh, immediately after graduation right he teamed up with a classmate of his okay uh, to actually come up with a product he had a idea so he was working for coke uh, as a gm before he did his mba so he had a product idea before that um so what he did he used his network he worked in a venture capital firm for about a year post graduation uh and he kind of convinced the vc to invest uh, in his idea right uh, and his co-founder is actually a classmate from wharton right just to give you a sense this guy his name is neeraj kakkar uh, he is the founder of paperboat right the beverage that we have um now why i'm giving you this example is see when he did his mba he was 31 right he already had achieved a fair degree of success in his life right uh, in coke uh, back then there was a pesticide scandal i don't know if you remember 2006 so he was actually the guy uh, working with the government uh, you know trying to resolve that so he had got tremendous career growth but sometimes uh, you also want to look at what i would call as you know your net worth is your network correct so uh, who you know uh, sometimes matters more than what you know correct because um if i were to look at a room full of 45 year old product managers correct um it is going to be very hard to separate one from another correct um so sometimes it's like these smaller aspects that uh, make a difference and uh, also uh, you know i have i've had students who have come and said that i have had a stretch of uh, you know uh, work ex where i did not get a break you know maybe when i was in college i should have taken cat 
but somehow it did not occur to me uh, and i missed this you know kind of boat of doing any kind of uh, masters or uh, pg diploma courses and then you know now i am at that juncture of my career where i am very able to clearly see what are my next steps and uh, i also realize that there are certain things that i need to do to invest in myself correct um and that's what i really have of you know um the risks of doing an mba now right so uh, one thing that i want you to look of uh, look at is you know when you are doing any kind of calculation right uh, it's always important to understand that everything has a risk involved correct um, crossing the street has a risk involved okay what i'm going to tell you is you know two things that i feel um you know are the overview of whenever you look at any kind of risk taking this is not just for doing an mba but any kind of decision that you want to make in life okay uh, even a decision like getting married okay um so uh, just just before that okay uh, i think i have asked this question before so let me just directly jump to the risks part okay so the first thing that i would want you to do is always look at the big picture correct um so the way you look at it is is this a short term gain or a long term investment right i think if you were to look at an mba as a short term gain uh, i am afraid the roi will be terrible okay i am going to warn you you are in for a lot of pain correct because um, the mba by itself is going to throw you out of your comfort zone but the question is isn't that what you want in the first place so in some sense if you want to do an mba honestly you need to be in some sense masochistic you know you need to know that this is you know you are going to go to a foreign country right you are going to be under debt right uh, you are going to be surrounded by people uh, that you don't know right you are literally uprooted even if if you are looking at an mba in the same country right let's say you're looking at um, doing an mba at isb or an im even that is a very different environment correct so i think you know first i would look at it why are you doing it if you don't have a very good reason please don't do it okay though i am an mba coach i am also a career coach i would say if you don't have a big picture then don't do it right um, don't do an mba because everyone else is doing it or everyone else is telling you that that is the best choice correct ask yourself what is it that in my career that i want to do right and then work backwards and ask yourself will doing an mba uh, you know help me get there correct uh, the second is you know Be jeff bezos has this uh, you know interesting thing called regret minimization framework correct uh, a regret minimization framework is he says whenever you want to make a decision correct nobody in the world knows whether it's a decision that is going to be right or wrong let me tell you okay what happens a lot of times after the decision is proved to be right we go and say what a fantastic so i'll give an example of cricket right uh, so way back in 1991 uh, there was a young sachin tendulkar who was given the last over by azruddin even when kapil dev had an over left and uh, this was against south africa and south africa choked and india won the match and people lauded azruddin for a great cricketing decision but here is the deal if tendulkar got hit for a six the same decision would have been said is is like the worst decision in life right so i think what happens is we tend to um define the quality of our decisions with the quality of our outcomes right so you know assume that there is no way for you to know right how things are going to work out the question to really ask yourself is when you are 45 right i'm just going to pick a number okay when you are 45 right will you look back and will you think are for one crore i did not get an mba from a top b school correct so that's what i would want you to consider right that is this something that you know i would so i'll give an example a very interesting example so 2001 2002 uh, i know someone who actually got an admit to isb and back then isb used to charge about 4 and 1/2 lakhs okay he did not join isb because he said well that's too much i don't know what the school is i have never heard of it unka second they are the second batch correct but now in hindsight if you look at it you know 4 and 1/2 lakhs looks like you know uh, relatively uh, inexpensive for an mba at isb correct so 
that's one thing. Um, how do you manage? So the thing is, risk always exists, correct? So how do you manage these risks, right? So here are some ways in which you can manage it. Uh, the first is you want to look for uh, options. If you are uh, in India, you might want to look for more B-School options in India. In fact, uh, I think uh, we have come out with a list of uh, B-Schools in India, top 10 kind of you know schools in India that uh, you could be looking at. This includes I am Ahmedabad, I am Bangalore, I am Calcutta, I am Lucknow. Now, XLRI, uh, SP Jain, Great Lakes, um, you know, a bunch of good names over there, right? So you might want to consider, uh, you know, doing an executive one-year program. Uh, the second thing is you may also want to have a kind of a budget in mind. So we want to say, well, I'm comfortable spending so much money. I'm not comfortable uh, spending, you know, uh, you know, uh, let's say for an international MBA. So that could be uh, one thing that you want to probably think of. Um, the other thing that I would really want you to think of is the next one year life is going to be very similar. Uh, if you are enjoying sitting through the session, you will enjoy a B school, but the B school is not going to be on Zoom. Chances are they're going to have various cameras placed, the professor coming on campus teaching. So it's going to be a lot more interactive in terms of, you know, uh, the way they're going to have uh, it participate. But please prep yourself to attend online sessions. Um, the other thing is, LinkedIn is your friend, okay? LinkedIn is your friend. Uh, networking earlier meant going for dinners and going to these, you know, um, happy hours in pubs and uh, meeting people. Though some part of it will come back, I, I, I don't uh, deny that, but at least for the next one, two years, um, your ability to network on LinkedIn, uh, how well you are able to kind of manage and influence people would be uh, important. Uh, if you do plan to study abroad, uh, make sure that you are still connected with your network in India because, uh, you know, a lot of foreign schools have got a strong alumni network in India, right? Uh, so definitely you can leverage that in case the visa issues uh, don't go in your favor. And um, other thing in general is, uh, you know, professionally speaking, if I were to recommend one career or one, um, you know, skill that you need to master in the next one, I mean, ASAP, right, is your ability to work on projects online efficiently, right? Um, so you need to be really good working with people online, right? So that's really one of the things that I would suggest as managing this risk. Okay, um, so just what are the things that uh, for someone who wants to do an MBA now, so let's assume that you want to apply now. Um, first, learn about the GMAT. Uh, learn about an MBA, right? Uh, we got plenty of resources for you on our YouTube channel, uh, on our blog, right? A lot of it is very good quality, high quality content. If you enjoyed whatever you heard in this webinar, you can be assured that the quality is like that. So please go learn. You can reach out to us. I'll be giving you details on how you can do that. Get your profile evaluated. See, what may happen is, uh, you know, you may have a lot of specific questions with regards to your profile that we may not be able to answer. So please make sure that you get your profile evaluated. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you were to ask me risk mitigation, start preparing for your GMAT ASAP. Um, if you have decided that you want to do an MBA, but you're not clear where you're going to do it from, how much it's going to cost, uh, you know, whether you're going to, uh, you know, what amount you're going to take a loan for, all of those can be answers, um, you know, that can be answered, right? I mean, questions that can be answered. Uh, but, you know, having a GMAT score and, you know, uh, anybody who's a crackable student would agree that uh, a lot of what we teach uh, on the GMAT, okay, uh, is essentially uh, a way in which you are expected to work in the corporate life. So any crackable student over here uh, who has attended CR, RC or sentence correction, you know what I'm saying, correct? You, if you enjoy the GMAT, correct? If you enjoy it as a test, you enjoy it uh, as a riddle puzzle, uh, I would say it actually adds to um, your own skills, right? Uh, so that is a bad reason for you to take the GMAT, okay? GMAT is too painful for you to just uh, get some skills, but yeah. Uh, and then, you know, post that, you cannot work on your applications, right? Um, this is, uh, so I'm going to have Rachel share it on the chat box. So uh, in case you want to get your profile evaluated, just please go ahead and click on this link. 
uh, someone will reach and touch, get in touch with you and uh, you know hopefully answer very specific questions uh, that you may have with regards to your profile right uh, in case you want to get kickstarted with your GMAT, uh, we also have a GMAT live session that goes on. I'm the faculty. This is how it's going to be. You're going to come in every weekend. The only difference is instead of just me talking, we're going to have a lot more questions, GMAT questions that we're going to be sharing. Um, so um, that's our GMAT live at home program. So you can go ahead and uh, uh, sign up for it in case you're interested. Um, for those who want to wait it out, uh, uh, here are a couple of things. First, might take continue with whatever you're doing, correct? Uh, but one thing that you could do is you could start preparing for the GMAT. Here is the deal. Do not sign up or do anything. Just read up about GMAT. Okay. Learn about the MBA application process. Don't have any pressure. So the thing is, uh, you can figure out by when you want to make the decision. So what you could tell is, let me get all of this stuff in place, right? But let me not decide before August. Okay. So what you then do is on your mobile phone, just set it up and say, you know what, August 15th, let me take a decision or let me revisit this decision of when to uh, apply. That's also fine. The only thing is you will miss round one. You can apply for round two, but that's also okay, right? Right now, if you are kind of conflicted in your mind or something uh, which is dependent, Right, a lot of times, uh, you know, there could be a dependency because of which you're not able to make the decision. And once you have done that, please reach out to us. Um, you know, um, whoever you have been talking to at Crack Verbal, the customer success manager who's, who's been emailing you, right? Just make sure that you put a star, put a remind me kind of thing. Okay, just reply to them, say that hey, I want to talk, and you know, get a solid plan for my MBA, what do I do, okay? So we can always go back and revisit this, right? Uh, so that's pretty much what I had. Um, so uh, I'm gonna be taking uh, some questions that I have. So let me just go ahead, I think, um, for me to see the questions, let me just, one second. Um, what about colleges waving off GMAT scores? Um, see, the thing is, I know that a lot of these schools are saying that uh, they are going to be uh, waving off, but you have to remember why they said it. They said it for people applying in R3 because there was no other option, right? Now, the way I would look at it is if you don't provide your MBA, uh, you don't provide your GMAT score, you are giving them one less data point for them to actually, uh, you know, uh, Evaluate you, correct? So 760 GMAT, you know what? It's going to be very hard for a B school to really say, well, uh, I'm going to reject this guy, right? But uh, that's where I think it's going to make a difference, right? Uh, that you make sure that, uh, please put the questions in the Q&A window. Um, so I'm going to be taking it only from the Q&A window, right? Uh, I had another question, which is, should I be taking the GMAT online or at the test center? Uh, I'm going to be coming up with a webinar next week on this. Uh, please make sure uh, that you kind of uh, follow me on that because I would give you a framework because it also depends on the kind of person that you are, correct? So I'll give you a pros and cons of what are the two things, but uh, to a large extent, I would say, um, you know, uh, with the physical board in place now, I think, uh, the GMAT online is good to go. Just to let you know, there was a lot of pressure, correct? Uh, I don't know if you've been following me on this, but you know, when it was announced from that day itself, we've been telling GMAT that it was a terrible idea, but now with the physical board, hopefully uh, things are going to be uh, sorted. Uh, so Rachel, maybe you can help me, um, you know, answer some of the questions in Q&A by asking them because many of them are very specific, uh, you know, um, uh, this so if you can just put it from the chat to the q and a i'm going to take the next uh, few um okay so there's a question about roi of doing an mb abroad over the next four as i told you next few years your roi may not make sense correct your roi may not make sense okay um so you have to look at it from a longer term perspective right so what is going to be this money? So let's take an ISB, for example, right? It is 35 lakhs, 40 lakhs, right? It's a lot of money. But then what is it that I'm going to get over a period of time, over 20 years of my life, correct? 
Um, so that's that's the longer term. Uh, this uh, in ISB's context, don't worry. ISB is uh, crapping bricks, man. They have their own problems to deal with because the current batch is not going to join till September first. So they have sent out an email to all the admitted students this year that they're going to be resuming classes by uh, September 1st. I don't know how they pick the September 1st, uh, uh, you know, uh, timing, but uh, there is going to be some changes. So I would say let's, let's just wait for a few more months uh, before we get that. Uh, what are the ways to finance your MBA? Um, so there are two basic ways to finance your MBA. The first way is you go to a bank, uh, you know, if you get an MBA uh, from, let's say, a school in India, uh, you're going to get to SBI and they give you a collateral free loan. OK, um, that's the first thing. Second is if you are going for a foreign college, then there are specialized institutions which again offer uh, non collateral loan up to 60 70 percent of your uh, tuition fees. So that's also option. So sometimes people take a combination of uh, a few ways to fund their MBA, right? Um, is applying through GRE a good idea? My take would be uh, since GMAT has now fixed the problem and if you want to apply to MBA, uh, my suggestion would be to kind of uh, maybe you know, take the GMAT rather than the GRE, right? GRE has an advantage if you are applying for master's uh, programs and along with that, you want to apply to certain MIM, MBA programs, then you take the GRE. But fundamentally for an MBA, my suggestion would be to take the GMAT. It's easier for the schools to make a decision. Uh, what about graduates now without experience? So I, I, I have already uh, addressed this Shubangi in this uh, session of uh, what are the advantages of doing an MBA for someone who has uh, no experience, right? So that it's possible for you to do an MBA with uh, fewer years of experience as well. Uh, but for people who are fresh graduates or people who have less than two years experience, uh, the suggestion is also to look at MIM programs, right? Especially in a place like UK, correct? Uh, my suggestion is if you are looking at US, please look at UK. Uh, UK has got some very lenient, uh, you know, policies as far as post MBA work permit is concerned. You essentially get a work permit for two years, correct? So that is like say uh, one year of your MBA plus two years of you graduating. So from 2021 till 2024, you are going to be in London, correct? That is assured. Now, if you say that, let's say you didn't get a job during this period for two years, correct? and you had to come back to India. I'm, I'm just saying, the end of the day, you also have to kind of back yourself, right? In terms of your ability, uh, because an MBA is not gonna kind of give that uh, on the platter. Uh, shedding lights on MIM program will not be in the purview of today's webinar. Um, uh, executive MBA programs in India. Uh, so uh, Rachel, if uh, you can probably give, uh, we have a list of such MBA programs in India, right? Um, so we can probably update it and we can uh, let you know, right? Um, yeah, so Japan, see again, I, this is not in the purview of today's webinar, so I'm just gonna pick to it. Uh, if you have a GRE, apply with the GRE, that's okay. I will be providing a list of top 10 schools in India. Scholarships uh, uh, is, is always an iffy situation, depends on a lot of factors, including your GMAT score. I don't know if you know this, but a higher GMAT score guarantees a higher probability of getting a scholarship, right? Um, internet issues, yes, definitely, right? If you're taking the GMAT online, you should be uh, you know, aware of internet issues, correct? What will happen to average GMAT scores? Definitely, it's gonna go up, right? Uh, I'm not looking at any of the questions in the chat, by the way. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I've been able to answer quite a few questions. So maybe uh, you can do one thing. We can continue with this conversation. Uh, so Rachel can post a link on GMAT Club. If you are a member of GMAT Club, you can go and post your queries based on whatever we have discussed today. I'll be more than glad uh, to help you answer your questions yeah so just please go and if you like today's session uh, please leave a feedback about that session uh, it would really benefit uh, us uh, so others can of get to know uh, i'm going to be taking the last three questions and then we will wrap this session okay um 
yeah so all the personal questions please uh, check yeah best country uh, post mba as i said uk is a good country to consider uh, if you are looking at canada and australia they have a pr program so my suggestion is uh, look at that pr program right um yeah so vivek please reach out to someone in the team uh, if we can have a discussion on that okay um so one of the things is uh, you might have heard of a lot of people uh, uh, a lot of colleges where gmat scores are not required correct um, what are these colleges typically they are not ranked colleges right uh, so if they require just an ielts and toefl score they are definitely not a top b school uh, so one way to look at it is let us say next year you get you have a what is going to happen you have a admit from harvard business school right and you are saying that hey i am not going to join harvard business school because my current life whatever my current life is is better than that option you will say that probably not correct so i want to kind of say that these are all hypotheticals usually when you get an admit uh, you know you have to evaluate it with your life state right so that's where your personal uh, angle would come into play correct so uh, please go ahead and uh, let me know in that uh, thread uh, that uh, she has shared and uh, these are some of our social media channels that you can uh, be connected with right and uh, thank you so much great having you and uh, hope to see you in the next webinar and i will be taking the threads that you have uh, the posts that you have made in that thread i'll be responding to them if you have any questions we have already shared the numbers please get in touch with someone at crack football we'll be more than happy to help you out thank you very much